Bangladesh is one of the world's most incredible economic success stories. At the heart of the country's economic boom is the garment industry. The first factory opened in the 1970s, and now it's a $30 billion industry. Bangladesh is the second largest manufacturer of ready-made garments in the world. This industry employs 4 million people in the country. 85% of them are women. the southern port city of Chittagong. Most of the clothing in these factories is made for fast fashion brands in America and Europe. It's all about huge volumes and quick turnaround times. Mustafa Udin is on a mission to transform the future of fashion here. He employs 2,000 workers, making jeans for big international brands. When he built the factory 11 years ago, Mustafa focused on creating a safe working environment. Mustafa focused not only on the social well-being of his workers, but on bringing environmentally sustainable technology where an in-house team creates new styles of jeans to show international buyers. He wanted to put Bangladesh on the map as a sustainable place to do business. And did you go to Rana Plaza when it happened? I uh, immediately, it was 11, 11, 11.30, I think something like that. I did it, I just took my shirt and I ran away and I went to the uh, Rana Plaza area. I had really not, not things to do, things to offer, and, but I did only one thing from Rana Plaza. When these things happened, from that day I decided how can I educate people, how can I change people's perceptions, how can another Rana Plaza not happen. <laughs> You really can see what I am doing last 20 years. If you check to my emails last 20 years, you will see every single day I work up to night 3 o'clock. Mustafa lives with his wife Tani and son Rahil in Chittagong. I am seeing him after um, many days. He has dozens of clients from all around the world. Many come to visit him in his factory's showroom. Like this one from the Marshall Barnegat, US ambassador, uh, from the Danish ambassador. Clients who buy jeans from Mustafa include famous fashion brands. And who's visited your lab? Almost every uh, highest retailer UK had been visited over here. Like at the moment, the Buho CEO, John Latte, uh, Barton, the top, uh, then also Arcadia Groups, Tesco, uh, River Island. Uh, almost everybody had been visited in my showroom and uh, they all had been written their comments over here, Damon Hams, mm -hmm. and they are all very happy. But things have changed dramatically since the coronavirus pandemic hit. On the 9th of March, the first three cases of coronavirus were announced in Dhaka. On the 26th of March, the government ordered all factories to lock down. Millions of workers were sent home with no idea when they would return to work. আমরা <laughs> Oi, 
অশোকের নাম হইলো আমরা বাতি মরা যাবো গর্দেব মানুষ যদি আমাদের এই ই গুলা না খুলে করোনা আর মর্ম কিভাবে করোনার আগে আমরা ভাত না খাই মরে যাবো But could the coronavirus erase decades of progress in a matter of months? In Chittagong, 17 days into the pandemic, Mustafa's had to close his factory. He was receiving emails from buyers cancelling their orders. Many of the jeans had already been made and were ready to be dispatched. Some had already been shipped. But some customers were saying they were no longer responsible for the payment of their order or were putting payment off indefinitely. See all these just jeans and those made for the Yucca High State. They just keep here like that. How many days I can keep the jeans like this? Where I have the space? You can see by yourself, there is no space. Everywhere, everywhere, same, everywhere, you can see. There is no space and it's not also safe for the working condition. Mustafa's pays for all materials to make the jeans up front. He borrows money from the bank for the denim and his workers' wages. He generally receives payment on delivery of the goods, not in advance. You can see all these fabrics, they are from Pakistan, China, India, Turkey. And all these fabrics we bought from our manufacturing partners, our suppliers. And they trusted us. They had produced these fabri fabrics uh, when we said them to do it, as like as we trusted to our uh, buyers peacock and all, all, all these people. The same thing, our fabric suppliers also trusted us and they produce and then they ship. Now, if you just look into all the all these fabrics, the, this, these are all, all dollar. These are all here around five to six million dollars of fabrics in this warehouse. And all the fabric, we borrowed the money from the bank and then we purchased this because we trusted our clients and we thought that we will ship them. They simply canceled the orders. They said that we don't want it. One of the companies that canceled a large order was UK high street retailer Peacocks. In total, Peacocks canceled a contract for 43,600 pairs of jeans worth over 162,000 pounds. In an email to Mustafa's, the company said it was cancelling payments for all stock already made and stock that had already shipped to its warehouse. 15,100 pairs had already been made and were ready to ship. Another 14,500 jeans had had the material bought for them. We tried to contact Peacocks to ask why they haven't paid for their orders, but have received no reply. Its parent company, Edinburgh Woolen Mill has recently filed for administration, putting up to 24,000 jobs at risk in the UK. We work on trust and faith and belief. Our business is like that. In apparel industry, everybody in this supply chain, they work like that. Whatever is supposed to be produced in March, we had not ordered that in February. We had ordered that in December. And then the vessel ships from different parts of the world, China, Turkey, all these places. So when the pandemic starts and everything shut down, even that time the container starts to come and then they start to be piling in the port. Mustafa's is paying $2,000 a day to keep fabrics that he's already ordered but can't store in his factory at the port. Containers after container starts to coming because we ordered the fabrics and raw materials two, three months before. I don't understand what to do with the responsibility of 2,000 people. Priority starts to feeding the families, feeding the workers, not the priority to clear the goods from the port. Not, it, it was not the priority that time. Millions of dollar goods stuck on the port, but trying how can I save my worker? How can I keep them alive?
Mustafa's received some support from the government in the form of low-interest loans to help cover salaries. It wasn't enough to cover all his costs. He took drastic action to keep paying his workers. I sold her my property, all the property. Even the house where you are sitting now, that also sold. This one also, this is my only house I'm having. Last month, uh, uh, she sold all her jewelries and gold and keep on paying to the people. So we are at the end moment, actually. She night, four night, he didn't sleep. He was in so much pressure. How, 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 how we, how he overcome this? He didn't sleep. After three day, four day, he, he asked me, uh, middle of night, uh, I felt pain in my chest. At times, things were very difficult. This is the street where I used to always look if I see anybody. Sometimes even, I used to think, you know, just jump from here to suicide. Then I used to think, I mean, people will think I'm a coward. Mustafa's factory reopened after one month. Six months on, some buyers have now agreed to pay for orders they had cancelled. Many are still insisting on a discounted rate. Mustafa's has taken on deep debts. I am suffering, I'm a part of the suffering, but it's not that I am, I am the only person suffering. We are suffering, the global manufacturers are suffering. And because it's not happened only in Bangladesh, the situation, what's happened with me, maybe I am one person or I am one, one single country, but it's the same in all the production countries. If you go to India, if you go to Pakistan or other countries, they also have the same situation. As an apparel industry, as a community, uh, we should make some kind of safety net where our workers are um, safe and secure. They should not have suffered the way how they suffered in during the pandemic times. 